got it. Hope you should be seeing my screen. So my instance is waking up. So in the meantime, I will show you in the documentation. Uh, after that, I'll again uh, explain you from the personal instance. Uh, let uh, you understand the concept of dictionary entries, right? Dictionary entries are nothing but fields. But in that field, you have several attributes and uh, uh, field configurations as such, you know, having a field mandatory or what is the uh, reference qualifier of the field and read only uh, and what should be the default value and is it the display value. So you have several components that are attached to dictionary entry. Now, a dictionary override will come into place only if there is a field and that field is shared among different tables. For example, uh, task table is the parent, right? Under task, you have several child, for example, incident, change, problem, catalog task, RITM, all these tables are child data. So what happens is all the fields of task table is automatically inherited to child tables. Now, not just the fields, but also the configurations of the field. As in, let us say in task table, if assignment group is mandatory, then obviously in incident change problem everywhere, assignment group will be mandatory. But you get a requirement that in incident table alone, you don't want to keep the assignment group mandatory. Now, how would you do it? What we would do it is right click configure dictionary entry, uncheck the mandatory uh, checkbox in the field. But here, since this field is shared across several other uh, sibling or a child uh, uh, table levels as well, we should not right away change it. Instead, we should create a dictionary entry override that works specifically for this table alone. Now I can show you this way. Right. So as I told you, so if there is a field on the task table, you can write a dictionary override in order to change the default value or to change the mandatory or to change the read only or any configuration of the field that shall apply only to the specific child table. For example, uh, incident table or anything and whatever you change in this dictionary entry override will affect this table only. It will not affect the task table or any of its sibling table. Like as in change table is a sibling table of incident, right? Because for both of them shares the same parent task. Now, what are the things that you could override is you could change the reference qualifiers, you could change the attributes, default values, calculations, dependencies, uh, display values, mandatory and read only. Reference qualifiers will be applicable only if the dictionary entry, original dictionary entry is of type reference right uh, when you give a reference at that time uh, it takes you it asks you which is the referencing table and ask and asks you what are the records it should display right the filter down records so that is what you call it as reference qualifiers and attributes help you to give colors or some designs something to that that specific field and default value is um, if you always want to keep assignment group filled with uh, service desk, you will give the value of service tech assignment group in the default value. So it means that by default, that assignment group field will have the default value of service desk. And calculations, if there is any formula that we need to uh, handle for this field. And, uh, and field dependency, right? Yesterday I showed you about a field dependency between assignment group and assigned to. Right, assign to is dependent on assignment group. As in, in assign to, there is a reference qualifier that uh, it should show only the users who have the role ITL. But since it is mapped with the dependency of assignment group, there is also an other condition wherein it will only list down the users who are member of the assignment group that you have chosen. Right, and display values. When I say display values, you remember I changed the display value of uh, incident table from uh, uh, number to assigned to and afterwards it started showing that Beth Angelin that you are assigned to names on the uh, incident header. So that is what you call it as display value for any table. You could have only one display value. 
and of course making a field mandatory or read only in the field level only right so in this documentation you have a sample uh, uh, configuration where you could do a dictionary entry over right so in this they're trying to change something with regard to priority so you do a right click they go to the field um, and do a right click configure dictionary if you scroll down configured uh, dictionary entry you will see something called dictionary entry overrides in that you could create one for the incident table or if it is already available you can just access that record and modify whichever configuration you want and now in this place what they're trying to do is they're trying to make okay they're trying to make the read only uh, uh, read only overridden in task table it was never read only but incident table they're trying to make it as read only so that it cannot be inputted by users instead it could be inputted only by system or some backend right this is with regard to uh, dictionary entry override if there is any question uh, please be specific so that i can demo that specific point to you I will take one sample record from the incident. Uh, to give you an understanding of this parent and child tables, uh, you know, watch me what I'm typing. I put task dot list, right? So when I put task dot list, it takes me to task table. So here you could see, you could see change request, and if I scroll down, you should be able to see incident and everything. See, I'll just put up a filter number starts with INC and you should be able to see INC record also. So I'll put up a filter starts with P, LCP, uh, problem records also. So literally any child table records of the task table, I will be able to see it all at one place because for all of them, there is one common parent, which is task table. Now, how do we in task table, how do we identify apart from this number, which table does it, does it belongs to? So there is a column called task type. You will have to do a group by so that you understand how much data we have that is split across several child tables of task. So now that I have done task type grouped, so I can see that there are several tables like there's a table called transferred order line task. There's a table called follow on task. And uh, uh, to be specific on something that should you should be already aware of, you should be knowing change request, change task, incident problem, problem task, request item, catalog task, and incident, of course. Yeah, incident, of course. So as I told you, all these are child tables of task. So everything can be seen at one place. But if you go to incident dot list, right? You will be able to see only incident records, no other records. Similarly, if you go to problem table, you will be able to see only problem records, PRB number starts with nothing else. But in task records, it, everything is stored because this is a parent. Now that we have taken a sample uh, incident, so I can uh, show you uh, to identify where these fields are coming from. For example, this technical notes is one field that we created by ourselves, right? So if you do it right click and you click on show technical notes, it will tell you that this is coming from incident table. Do you see incident dot u underscore technical notes. So it's coming from the table incident and it is of the field type um, technical notes. So it tells you that it is from incident table. So anything you change it here, for example, let me do a right click 
and do configure dictionary. And I make it mandatory, right? There are several components as I told you. There are components like default value, display, mandatory and all of that. Let me just touch this mandatory and I'll do update. Now, whatever I have done now will only impact incident table. Why? Because this technical notes uh, field is available only on incident table, none other table, right? So I've made this mandatory. But there's a field called description, right? Let me do a right click. And I click on show description. So it tells me that it has been coming up from the table called task and the field name is description. Now keep this in mind. This field is coming from task. Okay. Now I'll take some other uh, change request records. Some random change request record. And here I do a right click. And I click on show description. So here it tells me that this description field comes from again task. So what does that mean is this description field is common between incident and change obviously. Now let's try to uh, change right now. It's not mandatory right now. Let's uh, make uh, let's make that as uh, uh, mandatory true. So I do a right click and I do configure dictionary. So directly here, I will make it mandatory true and I'll do a right click and save. Now you could see that it would have impacted both the problem record and the incident record. So in prob incident record, you could see that the description has become mandatory as well as let me open up a problem uh, change record change or problem it could be anything so everywhere you see that it become mandatory you can see right change request also it become mandatory uh, but you now feel that oh i don't want to make it in uh, uh, you know mandatory in change request i just want to make it mandatory only for incident so now what you have to do is undo your changes whatever changes that you have done you have to undo And then if you scroll down to the related list, you will see something called dictionary entry overrides. So for this field, we do not have any dictionary entry overrides already defined. So let us create one. Once again. So we were explaining about uh, dictionary entry overrides. So any questions with that? So what we were trying to say is that uh, if you're trying to make out any field level changes for a field which is a shared field then it is going to impact all the other places where this field is shared right so instead of that you want to do it at only one place and not and that change should not affect the other ones if you feel that way then you have to make utilization of your dictionary entry overrides Is that clear? Any doubts on that? Okay. So previously, you remember uh, what we had done is we had marked this mandatory field checkbox true and we saved it. After that, we could find that this was mandatory throughout. Throughout as in it was mandatory in the incident level. It was mandatory in the problem. I'll open a sample change record. I'll open up to sample incident and sample problem record three records at a time. 
and you can see that we have uh, marked this mandatory field true and you can identify that in change it become mandatory in problem also it become mandatory and incident also it become mandatory and not just these three tables literally across these 18 tables the description field would have become mandatory but this is not what we expected right what we were in fact planning is we just uh, did a right click dictionary entry on incident and we were hoping that only incident should become mandatory but what happened is since this is a shared field it has become mandatory at every other place now how would you undo this is you just have to make mandatory uh, uh, whatever you've done you uncheck it save it back and now everything will become non mandatory now whatever you want to do you want to do it only for your incident table right then at this point look at the related list of the specific dictionary entry you will find something called dictionary overrides if there are already existing record available for the says available in the system out of box just try to find the record which says table is incident here for this field we do not find any existing dictionary entry overrides so let us proceed to create one for ourselves in this i will choose the table as incident because i want my current changes to be run only on the incident table and there are these are the components that you have uh, you have access to change in this we are going to only override the mandatory so in uh, existing or uh, in core system it is not mandatory but in your configuration or customization you're going to make it mandatory true so let's do this and we'll give submit so once this is done you could uh, see for yourself that in incident record it will be showing mandatory true whereas in change or problem it will no longer show it as mandatory true because whatever we have done has gotten applicable only for incident record thank you okay in incident record you could see that it's become mandatory in change request it is no longer mandatory let me refresh problem in problem also it will be no longer mandatory right yeah this is how dictionary entry overrides work uh, now uh, since we are in this concept of this thing i will also explain about labels so in labels um, so let us say you have a requirement uh, for a specific table uh, you want to uh, this description field itself you want to show it as the label as description on uh, all the tables otherwise you want to show it as a different label then you could make use of this labels entry uh, let me explain you so for all the child tables of task the label is called as description right but you have a specific requirement that you want a field called uh, instructions instructions but that should be applicable only for incident now you have two options either you can create a new field called instructions or just customize the existing one again customizing the existing one should not impact the other child tables now you could make use of labels and you could create a label for incident alone and this is similar to dictionary entry override except for the fact that it focuses only on the label nothing else nothing like mandatory or anything it focus only on the label so i'll give the label as instructions the plural form of the label also is instruction and i give submit now you could see that instead of creating a new field it just relabeled the one in the incident table from description to instructions 
here you can see it says description and here you can see it as instruction whereas for problem and all it will still say as description only right so creating a label entry is nothing but similar to dictionary entry override but only specific to label of the field pertaining to any table that you want now this label option is also capable of doing a special thing like kind of language translation so you go to configure label and you can define translations uh, for uh, specific fields for example right now we have for english right now let us say uh, you wanted it uh, a translation for some other language description in french french translate okay looks like in uh, french it is la description so what we can do is we can create a similar record uh, same like this task but we will just change this one and um, french language code for english you call it as e and right We have something called a language file. Let me see the code for uh, uh, other uh, languages. Okay, I'm not really sure uh, what is the code for uh, uh, French, but uh, for English it is E and right for German. I think it is D. So like that, if you make an entry like this and do an insert and stay, what happens is based on your user personalization here, you have something called language, right? I will change it to default view. Okay, in the out of box system, you have only English language, but you can enable uh, more languages by including more drop downs to the specific place. So at that time, when you create your uh, field labels at that time, what will happen is system will automatically translate for the fields you have. This having said, there are also few plugins that will help you to enable translations by automatically by systems. For examples, I will show you a few plugins and I will also activate them and show you how does it reflect back in the system. So if you are into a PDA, just you know, uh, in left navigation, look out for plugins and look out for uh, uh, the keyword called normalization. Right. So these are the individual translations. So let's look out for French and German uh, translations. So let's install this 
So it says that enabling this plugin might take two or three hours. But install this, let it run in the background, shouldn't be a problem with us. And in your personal uh, instance also, uh, you better just you know keep few uh, translations activated so that in uh, one of our uh, future sessions, we will see it in detail how uh, we could load data for translations so that if you have a company uh, which caters to the audience or uh, employees across different regions of the world having multiple language. Uh, if you see like the you know uh, Chinese people will not uh, uh, you know will not be much familiar with English and all the tool interfaces they would want to be in their own languages. So uh, of course same similar goes with French and German. So these are few languages that are common and uh, ServiceNow as a plugin. Plugin as in it is a package. You do not have to create a translation for each and every word. There is a, a huge file already uh, being installed by the system. You just have to, you know, like a plug and play. You'll have to install them such that it is activated for all users. And once this is activated, automatically in your user profile, you will start seeing the drop down that says, uh, in languages field, it will say French, German, whichever you have activated. And uh, people will be able to opt their language of their choice and the entire system will be auto-translated to uh, that specific languages. But as we know, it cannot do a 100% translation. There could be some 70 to 80% translation that was already made. And uh, if there are any few keywords that are not being translated, we will still be able to translate. Uh, set up translation. So now how do we do that is there is a module called UI messages. Right. So under system UI, there is something called messages. So it tells you what are the different translations that we could set up. For example, okay, we do not have any uh, record uh, generated for other languages. Probably once this plugin is completely installed, you can see that this record would have doubled up. You will see further more records in this table. Now, um, there is a uh, there is a word called uh, click on the title to rename the board. There is one sentence, right? Let us say you want this to be translated in some other languages. So you just click French. Now I can see French is this is because this is in middle of installation, right? Otherwise, I will not even be able to see this French. Now your I'll put imagine this is some French text. So whoever is a French user who has chosen French language and in the system, if it is supposed to say this wording instead of this wording, it will say this one, right? I will do an insert and stay so that I create a, a new French translation record created. So to summarize, the moment you install a plugin, in your user profile languages drop down automatically the other languages would start uh, coming up whichever you have installed first thing and also uh, system by its own self without admins intervention or developer intervention it will be able to provide translation for 70 to 80 percent of the words inside the system but what about that remaining 30 percent right so people have to find them and once we receive uh, concerns about that we will document it and we will find translations for them and make a entry at this place. So the English word here, like for example, description, the English word here and the French uh, description for it. Um, LA description, right? Something like that. So that if there is no translation that is available out of box, the one that we are creating here, it will help. So this is all about translation. Any questions on that regard?
all right so let's get into the next topic so probably we can cover up so ui policies ui policies actions and all we had seen yesterday okay we have data policies but before i could explain data policies i can show you okay i can show you sls uh, because data policy um, i'll give you an example ui policy represents user interface policy right meaning whatever happens in front of your eyes in the client level when you say client side it means that like in front of your eyes or in front of the browser screen there is another component called server side server side is what do you call it as backend this is something uh, that need not be not necessarily be on the screen not necessary to be on the screen so when uh, we would have requirements like we would like to do a validation on the client level on the server level so when you say server don't think too much it is just on the back end right translate it in your mind in such a way that when i say server side it means like in the back end uh, so let us say that there is a requirement wherein uh, assignment group has to be mandatory right you can make it at uh, field level or in ui policies you can make it at mandatory but what if there is some integration or some excel file upload or some import system that helps you to in create incident uh, but your ui policy will not uh, will not help there because that is something happening through external systems or through some import unlike the usual path of uh, normal form layout right at that time your ui policy will not be of any help so in order to perform the same operations that ui policy does but that validation should be on the database side or in the back end then you would create a data policy again data policy is one of the components of our table configuration so as usual let me take you to incident table so i'll do uh, right click configure all so you can see that the view is little changed right this is because right now we are in self-service view configure all so that you get at one place all the configurations that could be done for the incident table okay there is an existing data policy that you have let me show it to you before we could create one for ourselves as i told you ui policies and data policies are exactly same except for one difference one difference is data policies works also on server side and client side both it is like uh, you know making really sure that this condition is satisfied regardless of the approach of the incoming data it can be coming from client level or it can be coming from import set or some integration anything like that so similar to the components that you have in ui policy of course you have a table you have a inner checkbox reverse of fails active short description is just for developer uh, documentation again description is for developer documentation and condition is when this policy should apply right so this policy should apply only if the state is one of one of these two either resolved or closed and this should be applicable when you do an import set import set is nothing but uh, from third party system or from let's say you know a small thing as excel upload at that time through excel upload you are trying to import some hundred records into your incident table at that time uh, should this validation be done so that is what uh, uh, if you have such a requirement you can just enable this one and soap is like integration right through an integration soap or rest uh, you have a record updation at that time 
do you want this validation to work so uh, this will happen and uh, do you also want this to be happening on the client side so at this time you do not have to write a separate ui policy just enable this one this will do the job now how you have a ui policy or ui policy actions similar like that you have data policy rules in that it again does the same job of a ui policy making mandatory read only these two things so if it is a mandatory then what happens is it is from back end right so system will not update that specific record unless and until resolution code is filled up like if you're trying to ex upload an excel data and this excel is containing a list of incident with the states being marked as resolved now it is important that the excel should also contain the column resolution code if not that particular record will not be updated same with close notes as well which is nothing but resolution notes so the front end name is resolution note back end name is close underscore notes so that's why you see it like this don't get confused the back end name of resolution notes is they've developed it as close underscore notes similarly front end name is resolution code back end name is close code so that's why you see in the display value as close underscore code any questions with regard to data policies I can demo this uh, when we uh, get into this concept of uh, import sets as in how do you import your Excel into your incident at that time I can uh, create a data example for this and I, sh I can show you uh, how this is working but otherwise on a general context it is same as UI policy but it will also validate when the data is pushed from any source in addition to uh, form level like not just while filling up of the form manually but via import sets or via uh, web services at any point of time if you're trying to push in a data this validation will happen so that is the job of data policies now let's review what all we have uh, seen so far we have seen uh, dictionary entries if you have seen dictionary entry overrides we have seen uh, ui policies we've seen data policies now uh, let's get into notifications yesterday we had some uh, basic uh, you know uh, uh, basic uh, introduction about notifications so today uh, for the rest of the 15 minutes we'll see notifications in detail I have bring uh, I have enabled every field or to be coming up in the layout and if you're working on your personal instance and if you really wish you want those emails to me coming to your mailbox what you can do is you just type mailbox in the left navigation and here you will get um, okay just type email properties right mail properties so under system properties you have something called email properties go there right so here you can see inbound inbound means the emails that are coming to our system meaning the service now system outbound means the email that are being sent from service now to some other people right now if you create an account uh, you, okay so i will tell you the importance of this particular field okay this you will have to be very careful when you play around with your company's instance don't touch this box until you're very, really very sure i'll tell you what happens when you mess up with this particular field so in user we have a lot of email address right so let us say there is a notification that is defined in such a way that whenever the incident is commented it ha it has to either go to incident caller or incident assigned to right so at that time let us say able tutor is the incident assigned to now what the system will do is the system will send an email to able.tutor at example.com since such an email id does not exist fine no issues but let us say you put your email id in, uh, you know in top of this user you put it as test one two three or uh, snow dev 
one two three it's uh, let's say it's my gmail address okay at gmail.com so let us say this gmail id is a genuine id and it does exist now what will happen is it will literally send an email to this particular gmail address even though this is a personal instance it will send an email if you want to avoid this during testing now all these emails that you see in user table are example.com example.com such a domain does not exist so it's absolutely fine but if you import the data of actual user email id you'll have to be little careful now as part of testing let us say you put your email id your friends or colleagues email id and everything like 10 records right now you want those email id to be here but at the same time you don't want these email uh, to be sent to them because right now you're just in testing or validation some requirements something like that at that time what you have to do is in this place you have to give your email address for example let us say rakesh123 uh, at gmail.com let us say this is my email address okay what will happen is instead of sending to any of these people whichever email is there it will send it only to this user right this is a testing email address and it also has to be made sure that this particular property is enabled if this is disabled it doesn't matter you have a value in this or not it will not go to anybody so you'll have to send uh, keep your email sending enabled and uh, if you want the actual recipients to receive the email you just leave it like this you just leave it like this and it will be sent to the actual recipients so these recipients and all does not exist in anywhere because example.com domains and all never really exist but if you keep real original email ids here what will happen is they will definitely get an email even though this is a personal instance so now you have a requirement wherein like you want it's okay that you want to keep original email address but for testing you because you're testing some functionality then you probably put up your personal email address to this so that any email that needs to be sent from the system will automatically be redirected to your mailbox and also be be uh, you know aware of this uh, your mailbox might be like dumped with hundreds of emails so just be careful about it before you do anything Right. I'll show you a few. Uh, uh, how do you validate whether an email is sent or not? Now, to get to this place, we went to email properties. Right? Is this being recorded? Just want to be sure. Okay. Uh, email properties. Right. So you have something called system properties and email properties. So that is how we came up here. Now you want to check the email logs. Let us say. So you just go to mails. You type mails and you can see system blocks emails just under that bottom uh, line and you can see none of the emails were triggered today and nothing yeah something on the past so let's do create it as a 2a right so until yeah three days back there was an email now um, i can show you a live example like i can go to some specific incident and I can put up a comment. Test comment. I should be expecting an email coming up here right now you can see that uh, there is a subject that says INC would triple one as new comments and the email was sent to snowdev123 at gmail.com um, it is right now in send ready state right you can see send ready in a fraction of a second it should jump from send ready to sent and uh, it goes to this particular email address snowdev123 it is because the caller of the incident I kept it as able tutor and able tutors email address is snowdev123 at gmail.com all right so i'll filter down to the only the emails that were triggered today 
now let me open this email log for uh, you know and we can uh, uh, identify each of the components of this particular email so you can see that there is a subject like this and who's the recipient is this and you can see kind of uh, an HTML uh, section of how that email would have been received but to see the actual email in the bottom you have something called preview HTML preview the HTML of the email right so you click on preview email so it gives you the data it shows up here so they would have received an incident uh, you know an incident notification like this only they would have exactly received like this in their email body right and obviously with this specific subject incident as news uh, comments will be their subject and this could have been their body and this button is something is a link if you click on new tab it will take them directly to this particular incident and you have an option of unsubscribe notification preference and this is something that you call it as a watermark now what is a watermark in service now email is it is a, like a unique identifier every single email will have a watermark now uh, let's say they receive this email okay and and uh, able tutor mr able tutor reply back to the email he does not have to come to service now to reply back you just click on uh, uh, outlook reply all uh, and you can send up a message uh, yeah sure something like that and it will come and gets appended to this incident now how do you think that service now is capable of accepting these messages and uh, uh, mapping it to the exact incident it is because of this watermark in service now knows that okay uh, i received an email from uh, with such a watermark and this watermark is same uh, same as the one that we generated for this incident for that specific notification so it goes and correctly updated updates to the specific uh, uh, specific ticket record right and from email logs we can also fi uh, further uh, identify what is the notification uh, configuration that you have so in email you have something called notification and it's an hyperlink right so you jump into this you click on to this so the email notification display name is incident commented for ess Right. So as I told you, uh, uh, you know, yesterday we have components like when to send, who will receive, and what will contain. So all these components. So uh, any existing applications, you would have all these notifications already configured and all of that. Only for the new notif new notifications or new requirements or new applications that you develop. For that, you might have to start it from the scratch. Like you have to define by yourself when this email has to be sent and who should receive and what should the email body contain and all of that. Right? Any questions so far? We will have another session for our notification in de detail as well. But today, uh, I'm glad that I was able to explain you about this email properties and how you could identify your uh, emails from the logs. Uh, please, uh, you know, um, get in with your questions if any. If not, we will uh, close the session for today. And again, I re-insist, make sure you practice it in your personal instance. Otherwise, the sessions or the trainings that you might take uh, will not be really beneficial as you think. It will only become beneficial. Uh, the more you practice, the sessions would become beneficial, right? Just keep that on mind. Okay, if there isn't any question, I think we can drop for today's session. Thank you, everyone.